If you've spent any time building Power Apps, you've likely run into the infamous delegation limit. By default, Canvas Power Apps cap non-delegable queries at 500 records, and even when extended in the settings, you're still limited to 2,000. For many apps, this is perfectly fine, but for others, it can become a real challenge when you have the need to pull more than 2,000 records into your app. In this video, we're going to explore something a bit unconventional. It's not a standard Power App feature, and it's definitely not something that Microsoft officially supports, but it's a technique that allows your apps to retrieve more than 2,000 rows for non-delegable queries. Now, before we go any further, I will give you a word of caution. You should only consider this approach when you've exhausted the other right options. Delegable queries exist for a reason. They reduce network load, they improve performance, and they give a better user experience. Anytime you can stay within the Power Platform's boundaries, you absolutely should. With that said, there are edge cases where you hit a wall. When the data is too complex, or the data source doesn't support the delegation that you need, or the requirements leave no other option, then this is where this method can serve as a practical fallback. Let's take a closer look at how it works and what you need to understand before deciding if it's right for your app. Channel members have access to download the apps used in the videos as well as the YAML code used in the components that I showcase. You can click the join button below the video if you're interested in supporting the channel. We'll start by looking at our data source. In this case, we're using a SharePoint list called employees. And in this list, we have well over 2000 records. If I sort by the ID column from large to small, we have over 6,000 records. In our Power App, we simply have a table control directly linked to that employees list. To test out our current delegation limit, we'll go ahead and insert a button control into our header. In this button's on select property, we'll simply use the clear collect function to collect our employees list into a new collection. For the text of our button, we'll go ahead and set this to the count rows function of our new collection. And that way we can see how many records are inside of our collection. If I go ahead and select the button, we can see 500 are returned to our app. We'll go into settings and we can scroll down to the data row limit and we can change this to 2000. This is the current maximum inside of Power Apps. If I select our button again, we can see that 2,000 records are returned. If I go into settings and I try to change this above 2,000, we receive a warning that the value needs to be between 1 and 2,000. So if I close that and go back into settings, we can see the data row limit is still set at 2,000. We can increase this value up to 5,000 by downloading our Power App and modifying the files that make up our app. We'll go up to the top right corner and we'll select Download a Copy. In our File Explorer, we can see our downloaded file and it shows up as our app's name .ms app. Now the ms app file type is really just a special file type for a zip file. So we can access the contents of this file by renaming the file extension to .zip. It'll ask us to confirm that we want to change the file extension and we'll click yes. Now that our file is a .zip file, we can simply extract the zip file. Our app now shows up as a folder and we can go into the folder to see the files. Now there's some interesting things here that we might cover in a future video, but for this purpose, we want to open properties.json. If you have VS Code installed, you can open it with that or you can simply open it with Notepad. You'll see some information and some settings in here about the app that you just downloaded. If you scroll all the way down to the bottom, you'll see this field for default connected data source max get rows count. And right now this is set to 2000. Here we can change this value up to 5000. We can't go above 5000 because by default, for most of the default connectors like SharePoint or Dataverse, 5,000 rows is the maximum you can get without some sort of pagination option that you would see in something like Power Automate. In this case, we don't have a pagination option, so we can only get the maximum row count, which in this case is 5,000 for those connectors. We can make this change and then save our JSON file. With our file modified, we can highlight all of the files contained in this folder and right-click and choose the option to compress to a zip file. This will recreate the zip file of our app, which we can give it a new name. In this case, we'll call it increased delegation example. 
At this point as well, we want to change the .zip file extension back to .msapp. And this will repackage our files back into a file type that Power Apps can read. Back in Power Apps, we'll leave our current app and go back to the Power Apps portal. Here you'll want to navigate to the app section of the portal. And on this screen, you'll be given the option to import an app at the top. Here we'll select from file, and it's telling us that it's expecting a .ms app file. We'll go back into our folder that originally contained the unzipped contents of our app, and we can see our new file located here that we repackaged, and this one we called increased delegation example. We'll select this, and we'll choose open. When our app opens, you can see it looks exactly the same as the app we were looking at before. The difference is when we click on our button to clear collect our employee's data source, we'll see that it doesn't return 500 or 2000, it returns 5000 records. We'll go into the settings and we can scroll down on the general tab, and here we can see that the data row limit shows 5000. Now before when we manually entered a value above 2000, it prevented us from doing this and reverted the value back to 2000. In this case, since we modified the value directly in the file, it allowed us to push the limit above 2000. Now this also works inside of galleries as well. So if I add a non-delegable query to this items property of the table, such as add columns, where we're adding a test value, you can see that the rows returned by this table is 5000. Once you've successfully imported your app with the new delegation limit, you can simply go up to the save menu in the top right corner and select Save As. Here you can either save this as a new copy of the app, or you could replace an existing app and overwrite the previous version. All of the previous versions of the app that you're replacing will still exist, so if you need to roll back to those previous versions, you can easily do that through the normal restore process. Again, I want to stress that this should not be the go-to solution when you're facing delegation issues. In most cases, you're probably looking at something that needs to be reworked to accommodate a more efficient way of collecting and gathering your data inside of your Power App. But there are instances where you might be using two or three collections to collect around 5,000 rows of data, and you could combine that all into one collection using this method. Raising the limit to 5,000 doesn't solve the issue, it can just delay the problem. One thing you should do if you decide to implement this with your own data sources is to measure the performance of your app on different devices. Retrieving this many rows can certainly impact performance, especially on data sets that have many columns. In that case, you may need to use the show columns function to reduce the overall amount of data that you're retrieving from your data source. So again, to wrap things up, this is a fix that you can use when you've truly hit a delegation blocker. If you've optimized your data source and your queries as much as possible, and you've ruled out all other options to rework the structure of your app, then this might be a good alternative to squeeze a little bit more data out of your data sources. I'll reiterate too that this is not officially supported by Microsoft, and there's no guarantee that this workaround continues to work in the future. Microsoft has defined very clear boundaries as far as how many rows should be retrieved inside of a Power App, but if you've tried to work around delegation before, you know that you're already escaping the bounds of best practices there. In any case, you should thoroughly test your apps to make sure that this functions and behaves the way that you would expect. Not every connector is the same, so if you're using one outside of the standard Dataverse or SharePoint, you might experience some different results. Testing on multiple devices and with different users, as well as on different network connections where you might have lower bandwidth, are all important things to do if you decide to implement this. Let me know what you think of this trick in the comments below, and whether you'd use it in a real-world app. If you liked the video, give it a like, and subscribe to the channel for more tips and tricks like this. I hope you enjoyed the video, and have a great day.